up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're going to be looking at tronda one of the og nukas in the game she was once the best nuka for arena in the game she's definitely fallen off since then and been power crept but that still doesn't stop her for being an absolute monster in the game she's definitely one of the best nukas for hydra you can really get some insane numbers out of her. Um, but yeah, and she's still good for the arena. I mean, if I was going to use an arena, I would probably put her in full stone skin. Just shows she has that survivability. But I've come across like, you know, 9k attack stone skin trunders and they'll just drop your entire team. But yeah, she's still a beast. So we've got her uh, in six pieces of Merciless. Would love to you know, get the accessories as well, but it's going to take a long time to do that from Curse City. So the stat bonuses we get from Merciless are insane. So we're getting 25% extra attack. We're getting 35% ignore defense, and you only get 25 with Savage. That's an extra 10% ignore defense. You get a little bit of speed, and we're getting 15% crit damage as well. And then that 30% chance to decrease a random skills cooldown when dealing damage. So uh, to me, the way that reads is I don't think it's just like, you know, it reduces one um, turn of cooldown. It fully, uh, you know, reduces the cooldown on a skill. That's the way that I read it. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But yeah. Yeah. And we got some insane gear on her. But we've also been really unlucky with the ascensions. So like, We'll see just defense, HP, defense, flat attack, no attack percentage, no crit damage, and the same for the accessories, just flat, flat defense, flat HP, no good. So let's just look at the gear we've got on her. So this is an insane weapon. This is one of the best weapons on my account. The shame there wasn't crit damage on there, but 31% crit rate is a very, very tasty weapon and 12% uh, attack percentage as well. So yeah, insane weapon. Uh, substats we want to be looking for are obviously speed, crit rate, crit damage, and attack percentage. Uh, on the gloves, we've got crit damage, uh, attack percentage on the chest piece, speed on the boots, and they're only five star. Would love for these to be attack percentage. But at the moment, you know, Merciless, it's going to take us all a long time to build up sets where we can you know, swap this out for attack percentage boots because that will massively bump up the damage. Then we've got um, attack ring with attack percentage, crit damage on the amulet, and then an attack banner. And this banner is not particularly great either. You know, only one roll in speed and one roll in attack. So I could probably upgrade that now. So total stats, we are rocking. 49k HP. Naturally, Tronda is a very, very tanky champion. Uh, 6.4k attack. Um, could probably, if we got those ascensions and swapped out boots, probably could bump that up to 8k. That's still pretty decent. Uh, 199 speed, 101 crit rate, and then 259 uh, crit damage, and as low accuracy as possible um, because of how her abilities work. You won't get a double hit on the, uh, I think it's the A3, just double check. Yeah, so on the A3, we need to make sure that we've got no accuracy. So let's go through her skills. Passive. This champion's resistance increases by 10% for each stun debuff this champion places on an enemy. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 100%, or up to, up to 100 uh, this champion speed increases by 5 for each enemy currently under HP burn debuff. Only accounts, uh, so only counts active HP debuffs. Stacks up to 15. So most people don't actually use a passive. I don't use a passive. We're just going for raw damage. And it doesn't matter. She doesn't need it. She doesn't need it. So A3 attacks all enemies has a 70% chance of placing stun debuff for one turn. Places a HP debuff burn for enemies under stun. Places an extra hit on enemies who are not under a stun debuff. So this is why we don't want her 
to have um, accuracy because if she has accuracy, she'll land that stun and then she'll place that HP burn, which is what we don't want to happen. She does way more damage on a double hitter. It's a bit of a shame because it is on a five turn cooldown. So, you know, that's why she's really good at Merciless because if we can reduce this skill, there's a really good chance it can happen. It means she can just go again. Uh, A2, Cloak of Ages. Attacks one enemy, then attacks all enemies with a second hit, dealing 60% of the damage inflicted from the first hit. So this ability hits really, really hard. There are some issues with it, though. If the enemy's in stone skin, you're basically going to do nothing. If there's an ultimate Death Knight on the team, he's going to take that hit, and you're basically going to do nothing across the board. So there's a few things you do need to watch out for. And that A1 Golden Mallet attacks one enemy two times, has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn after the second hit. And it goes up to 60%. But again, she is just about the raw damage. We don't care about landing stuns with her. We just want to blow people away. And all of her abilities just slam. So, blessings. I've got her in Soul Reap. Um, again, if I could just. Um, get her to like four star that would massively bump up my damage um i, I kept her in soul reap because it's it's better for the arena probably not better for hydra um there's definitely some different options you could go for so let's uh let's have a look at the blessings we could take so i mean crushing rend can always be good for pve uh, it just means that we do more damage but Someone said to me the other day, a really, really good way to go is Heaven's Cast uh, for Hydra. So basically increases the damage inflicted by his champion according to the buffs on them. So if we've got loads of buffs on ourselves, we're going to do more damage. And it's 0.5 damage for each buff. Well, it goes up to 2 plus 2% damage for each buff. And, you know, if you're using her in Hydra, you're probably going to be bringing in Lydia, uh, maybe some other champions as well. So you've got like three buffs on you, you're doing an extra 6% six, uh, 6 damage, so it can really buff up your damage. But yeah, so I think Crushing Rend and Heaven's Cast are the best ways to go. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, the other thing I've seen outside of Soul Reap is people will use a Lightning Cage. So you probably use that if you're going to put her in Stone Skin, so people can't strip it and it will stay on you longer. I mean, Lightning Cage is still pretty good, and you do do some extra damage with those uh, Lightning Orbs. But for me personally, I just feel like Soul Reap's the best way to go, and you are just going to do an insane amount of damage in Hydra and in Arena. So Masteries, we do have our in a uh, PvP build, and it's fine. It does work really good for Hydra as well. So in the Defense Tree, going into all those counterattacks, uh, in the offense tree, we're splitting across, taking Ruthless Ambush, did extra damage on that first hit, uh, taking Cycle of Violence to try and reduce the cooldown of a random skill by one turn. Okay. This is a must on her. It can really help with the A3 and A2, and both of them are insane hitting abilities. Uh, then just taking as much damage as we can in the left-hand side, and then going into Helm Smasher. I mean, Helm Smasher is definitely better for Arena, but it's still going to help you with Hydra. I mean, you probably would want to take War Master if you're only using her for Hydra. But she's still going to drop heads. It doesn't really matter that much. All right. So we looked at the skills. We've looked at the gear. We've looked at the masteries. Now, let's take her into the arena and do some damage tests. See how hard she hits. And I will go against my Leores. And he's in a way, way better build. He's fully awakened. So just have a quick look at the stats again. And he is just insane. Like the best champion on my account. Um, yeah, just an insane build. But yeah, 7k attack. I mean, this could still go up because some of those cheeky ascensions haven't landed in the right place on the gear. So I could still really bump that up massively. But still, I mean, he is in an insane build. All right, guys, let's just go for it. All right, guys. So I come across this team, really, really tanky of... Uh, on with Death Knight and Duchess. So this should be a good way to sort of see what sort of damage we're getting from, from Trunda. I remember that, you know, she's only two-star awakened where Leores is six-starred. So we're going to boost that turn meter. 
Okay, Lady Miyaki is going to cut in. I, and remember, that's one of the great things about Leora is that he can just, you know, he cannot be CC'd. So again, another sort of advantage that he does have over Trunda. So we're going to stun their team. Let's uh, put it on one speed just so we can sort of see the numbers from Leores. So it's A3, what we're saying. Uh, that was like 86k. And I didn't quite see Wukong. And yeah, so we brought in a Barsatha. No, sorry, Ba Satha, who is a great counter to Wukong. He will just stun him all day long. It can fail though, so it's a little bit annoying. There's not a hundred percent. And great. So we've still got that increased attack on the team. Oh no. Yes. Okay, oh my definitely didn't land it. Great. So we're gonna open up the A3, see what sort of damage Trunda does compared to the Ores. So we got Pretty similar sort of numbers, to be fair. Um, that was like, I think, 80k on Lady Miyagi. And Liores, let's just do the A1. Wow. I mean, 50k hitters from Liores. I mean, he is built different. But yeah, I mean, I'm still impressed by the damage that um, Trunda's doing. And she is nowhere near in the same sort of level of gear that um that Leoris is in. So let's see what her A1's doing. 45k. But it is on Wukong, who's obviously not gonna be as tanky as Duchess. And then let's just wait for the monkey to come back. Try and land decrease attack on him. And now Leoris. Oh no. Wukong uh Thunder again. So a2. Yeah, it just doesn't... Her A2, it just doesn't hit that hard. It's so much better for PvE. So, Lurus is A2. I mean, look at that. Just insane damage. Um, do you know as well? Like, I'll take you... Um, I'll show you sort of the Hydra team that I'm running as well. Uh, but let's try and do a few more arena matches. See if we can actually drop, drop some hard teams with her. All right, guys, so we've got this team like with Liores, Wukong, and Cardiel. We should be able to lock them out quite easily with Heji. And we're definitely going to be using Uko for the strips. Nice. Most of the team locked out. But we, we also need Uko just to block Liores so he can't, so he dies, so he doesn't get that unkillable buff. Nice. And to be fair, this should be pretty much game over. Just going to push back Leoris's turn meter. So let's open up with the, let's open up with the A2 just to be different. And we're going to focus Wukong. 153k damage and then sort of spread across the board. Sort of 50k. Nice, decent, decent damage. Okay. Uko. Oh, we didn't land. Um, decrease attack on everyone. Going to just try and push back. Wukong's turn meter. And then we're going to open up with the A3. Oh. With, uh, with Trunda. And again, put it in slow-mo. Nice. 180k damage on Liores. I mean, she's still an absolute monster. Then another Necred team. Plus, they've got Krisk as well. So I'm bringing in Elva just for revives and also just to help cleanse. I'm going to strip some of those buffs. And I think we should be able to win this one quite comfortably. So again, opening up with the A3 off Trunda. And sort of 80k there, 90k. Nice. And yeah, I mean, she is still dropping heads. Still an absolute beast. The only person that might be trouble is his uh, Harima. As long as we can try and get down Necred. And A2, 78k. But then, I don't know what happened there. But, you know, you can see it didn't really do much for the rest of the team. So hopefully Harima's only going to open up with her. Oh, a stunned again. Yeah, usually... My Uko does not land that many stuns. 
Really, really lucky. Well, only 15k off that. Um, off the A1 on Trunda right there. Not so hot. Okay, and back to Trunda. A1. All right, we got the kill that time. Okay, so that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much game over, my friend. And nice. I mean, still hit pretty hard on Harima. You know, Harima's probably in like 7k plus defense. Yeah, nice. So I just wanted to show what she can do in Hydra. And this is where she's like really excels at the moment. This is where a lot of people are using her. And I don't have all of the champions to sort of make the classic team comp that you need for this. So you need like a Kaima or Yumiko, anyone that can reset cooldowns. Uh, unfortunately, Renegade is not good enough for this and she commits suicide. So that is not a good option. I did try it and it just doesn't work. I mean, this is still a pretty good team, almost 600 mil. Um, Trunda doing 226 million damage at number one. Leora is coming in second at 195. And then Shamuel at um, 83 uh, mil. So what I'd say is you've got to remember like Trunda, she has nowhere near as much attack as Leora is. She's not fully awakened and she's still outperforming him and she has long cooldowns on the A3. And actually in this fight, she did die a lot. And um, so I don't really have a healer in the team. Like I know other team comps I've seen for this, people do bring in um, sort of very unique healers or different ways of healing like Leech. And yeah, so yeah, she is really pumping out the damage. She can still be used in loads of content like clearing waves and uh, just, you know, um, and Spider as well. She's a, a beast in Spider Hard as well. She can be used to help you climb to get up all the way to stage 10 on hard mode. So yeah, she's still a really, really good champion. Definitely still worth investing in. I still think it's going to be a long time for us to build up those Merciless sets. And it's probably best to still keep her in Savage for the meantime. Because you probably have better gear at the moment. Already farmed up. Already with the right ascensions. But over time, obviously, Merciless is just going to kill Savage. But yeah, still absolute beast. Still a great, great top tier champion. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in the video soon. Peace.